Uh, this morning, I enjoyed so much hearing so much about tobacco and uh, alcohol research. And uh, as T.K. Lee mentioned, uh, serotonin and dopamine are very important neurotransmitters in both nicotine uh, and uh, alcohol research. Uh, in this five minutes, I just want to demonstrate one point to you. That is, the behavior can be regulated by gene and also the environment. Um, the reason we chose ML MAO to study, not because it's the same name as Chairman Mao. Rather, this enzyme is very important. It controls serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. And you know all the importance of these three neurotransmitters. And I'm hoping that all the study we have done with mice can translate it into human studies. So I'm really excited to collaborate with Jeff and David on this study. And I hope the animal model will provide us some insight how to choose the SNPs and how to choose the polymorphism and the enzyme in our study design. So what does the MAO do? MAO actually present in two forms. We say they are cousin, A and B. MAO A uh, oxidizes serotonin or epinephrine, epinephrine and has a selective inhibitor, clodulin, used as antidepressants. And MLB uses a substrate phenylethylamine, benzylamine, and the specific inhibitor is depinil. And depinil is used to treat Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer, also anti-aging. So, um, and then dopamine, which is very important for addiction, and that's the common substrate for MLA A and B. So now you know why I study MAO. Okay, we started uh, uh, working on this enzyme starting from the protein. Starting from the protein, but in the, in the nature, our parents give us DNA first and then go to messenger RNA and pro, uh, form the protein as uh, David showed in his first slide. But for the scientists, we're working from the protein to the messenger RNA, then to the gene structure and promoter. In MLA promoter, there's a very popular polymorphism, and many people use it as a, a linkage study to link with nicotine. And Dr. Melissa Wilson has a poster later this afternoon showing these polymorphism uh, with uh, nicotine. So, uh, so the, here is the gene structure. MAO actually is a big gene, but I'm going to show you when you have one single base pair mutation, you can alter the behavior very drastically in a moment. And this is how MAO looks like. And actually, that's how it presents in your brain. The C terminal is inserted into mitochondria, and the N terminal is outside. And to study the function, we made a series of knockout mice. So first, we remove ML aging, and then turn out a very interesting phenotype that is they are fighting. They become more aggressive. And when we knock out the MLB, B, look at them. Pretty friendly, right? This is to our surprise, because in vitro, they have uh, overlap substrate specificities, but when you knock out this gene, you see very different phenotype. And then, of course, you want to see what happens if you knock out both A and B. And this gives us another surprise. And instead of getting aggression, so if you do the normal math, you have one aggression, one piece loving. If two together, you should see less aggression, maybe, or more aggression, because B also can oxidize A substrate. But what we got is different. First, they are very small compared to the wild type. These mice are in one same cage. They are from same litters. And these are the brothers. They are the wild type, uh, much bigger. So the first surprise is they are smaller. And the other surprise is they are very fearful. I'll show you. 
in a minute. So at the same time, this is five seconds, five minutes, good. At the same time, I thought we have plenty of time before break. <laughs> you, you, you like to see the movie. <laughs> okay, so when we do the MLA uh, knockout, the mice was aggra aggra very aggressive. That was interesting, but our work become more interesting when, uh, when someone, a uh, Brunner in Dutch, he find that there is a one Dutch family have eight males all committed a severe criminal behavior. And then they found out that these males are missing MLA gene. So in both human and man, in both human and mice, if you're missing MLA, it will show aggression phenotype. What, how come? Oh, that went to the end. These are my people, not aggressive people. <laughs> okay. So when we, when we have MLA knockout mice, give us a, a lot of surprise, because serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine went up, and they show aggression. And when B knockout, only PEA went up, and these these neurotransmitters didn't change at all. So this tells us that these two isozymes are doing their own job in vivo. And then they give you a different phenotype. So actually, we tried to make AB knockout mice, and that was a very difficult project. But one day in the MLB colony mice, there is one mice just going very crazy, fearful. So my technician says he wants to sacrifice that mice because it's annoying. Every time she opens up the cage, the mice jump out, and you don't know what the mice will do. And it's very hard to chase these mice. <laughs> and I, I feel bad that you sacrifice the mice for no reason. But after a while, it's really bothering her. So I think it bothers you that much. You have to do it. You just do it. And then two months later, I have another such kind of mice showed up. So Kevin was joking. Maybe this is the AB double knockout mice. So let's measure the urine 5-HIAA. And we did, and was zero. So we really got a double knockout mice from God. And then, and then take us another year and a half to figure out where is that mutation. And that mutation is only one single base pair change, A to T. And this change changed the lysine to a stop codon. Therefore, in this mice, you have a shorter MLA gene, and that gene is not functional. So this is how we got our double knockout mice, and shows you how important just one single base mutation will result in different behavior. So now, in the MLA knockout mice, we have serotonin went up twofold. And the MLB knockout mice, serotonin no change. So if you do the regular math, how much serotonin change you would expect? Two plus zero should be two, right? But the biology is more complicated. We see sevenfold increase in serotonin. So this tells us actually MLB is quietly oxidized serotonin, just our measurement is not sensitive enough. What about the phenotype? Here is the heart rate. The green showed the wild type in the home cage, very similar to the pink. Now if we put just a mice to a new cage, right next to it. This is the most mild stress, novel environment. The wild type look about the same, but look at this, double knockout mice is very, very fearful. The heart rate is totally irregulated. So here shows you the gene is critically important, but also the environment, the stress will change the the behavior. So now let's see the mice. 
So this is the A nakamides. You can see they fighting. And then we gave catenserin, we can stop the fighting. And these are the one we did a transgenic mice, transgenic gene, and they don't fight. Here is the double knockout mice. They are in the same litters. See, the fearful guy is the AB double knockout mice. Oh, the, old, the brother says, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> but he's still scared, tried to running around. So that's, remember, only one single base pair mutation change the behavior so drastically. OK, here I want to demonstrate the hyperreactivity. Now you know why the technician wants to sacrifice this mice. <laughs> See, this is a psychiatrist. He cannot catch this little mice. <laughs> but this is an AB double knockout mice. And he's so fearful, so he has a hyperreactivity. OK. so. I hope this 10 minutes give you some, impress you how important ML is, and also demonstrate the gene and the environment interaction can affect the behavior severely. Now, what does this have any to do with nicotine? You know better than me that MLB has, and A both decrease in human who are smoking, and also MLB is important for personality trait, like a sensation seeking and a novelty seeking. So we think ML play important role in this mechanism. And since ML A and B both regulate serotonin and dopamine, so we, uh, David and I, and our group going to look at all the genes that in the serotonin dopamine pathway, and to see if there's anything to do with nicotine addiction or alcohol tolerance, whatever. Thank you.